Trojans of USC versus the Stanford Cardinals. Today's game is brought to you by a participating advertiser, light beer from Miller. Everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. It's 74 degrees at kickoff time here in the Los Angeles Coliseum. Mike Walden along with Dave Levy as we bring you Pac-10 football, USC Stanford. Neighbor kicking off for Stanford. It'll be fielded by Butler. He's going to bring it out. Butler trying to get to the outside at the 15, makes his cut at the 20, 25. Butler goes forward close to the 30-yard line. Dropped at the 29. The tackle made by Joe St. Jim. He's one of three Stanford captains here today. The other two being Charles Bedford, an offensive guard. Brian Holloway, a right tackle and offense. And we've got a Stanford player down at around the 14-yard line. It's Gary Wimmer, who only plays on Stanford special teams, and he was shaken up. He's down around the 14-yard line. So right away, the Trojans get it out of there in a hurry with Butler bringing it out to the 28. Mike, one of the hardest hitting plays in all of football is a special teams man going down to break up a wedge. You've got about a 30 or 40 yard run. It's a it's a head on collision at full speed and that's exactly what happened that play. Let's hope he's just shaken up a little bit. And since they're grabbing both of his arms, it's probably not a shoulder and we'll see some more of him. SC ranked number one in the wire service polls five and oh with victories over Texas Tech Oregon State Minnesota LSU and Washington State Rod Dauhauer has guided his Stanford Cardinals to a three and two record lost their opener down into lane 33 10 beat San Jose State 45 to 29 lost to Army 17 13 then came back to beat Boston College and UCLA the last two weekends Paul McDonald sends Rock Shawnee in motion. The pitch to Charles White around the right side. The sweep. White is up close to the 35-yard line. Brought down by Chuck Evans. He's the defensive leader of the Stanford Cardinals. Evans, a senior end from West Covina, 6'4 and 240. But right away, Charles White rips off a gain of seven yards. Mike, on that play, the Trojans put Rock Shawnee at split end, but he was off of the line of scrimmage. The split end was over on the tight end side on the line of scrimmage. He went through the backfield for an unbalanced line. It's a good way to run the pitch play. Marcus Allen and Charles White in back of the quarterback. Paul McDonald, Rock Shawnee again in motion. And again, here comes Charles White. He gets across the 40 to the 41. And White picks up six yards. First down, USC. John Robinson has used about every formation I've ever heard of this season except unusual spreads and shotguns. And I think those little wrinkles really do put pressure on a defensive team. You can see Rock Shawnee here in the replay. Two plays in a row, Charlie White on the student body left play or student body right, whatever you want to call it. And the tackle on White was made by Steve Foley, a defensive back. First and 10 at the SC 41, opening seconds of the game here at the Coliseum. White again, White to the 50, 45, makes his cut at the 40, finally brought down at the 36 yard line of Stanford. A run by Charles White of 23 yards, and the all-time Pac-10 rushing leader was brought down by Kevin Bates, the outside linebacker, and it's been all Charles White so far. It very well could be that Paul McDonald is automaticing away from whichever safety man Stanford is not bringing up to support the run. That's three times in a row. And now White goes out. Mike Hayes is the new tailback. McDonald flips it out to Hayes, 45-35, and uh, brought down out of bounds at the 33-yard line by Terry Reniker, the outside linebacker of Stanford. But still, the Trojans picks up, uh, pick up a total of three yards in the play. Mike, what Stanford is trying to do with their defense early in the game is this. They're going to bring up a safety man and probably slant their line away from him, trying to get strength both ways to stop that outside pitch play with White. They'll vary which one it is. McDonald is trying to guess with them an automatic. Dan Garcia's wide to the right side. He's in there for Kevin Williams. Charles White back into tailback. White gets the call. White to the 25. Charles White slams down to the 19-yard line of Stanford. A 14-yard drop by number 12, the senior from San Fernando, Charles. Well, 
Well, so far we see a very efficient USC offense continuing to be efficient. This is the greatest fear Rod Dow Howard of Stanford probably has. USC being able to keep that ball on the ground and eat that clock up. White has carried four times for 50 yards in the first two and a half minutes of the game. First and ten at the Stanford 19. McDonald to throw to Garcia. Out of bounds at the eight yard line. Dan Garcia, the senior from Los Angeles High School, great hands, making the grab of a Paul McDonald pass, and McDonald ranks number one in the NCAA stats this week in forward passing. He's hit on 69% of his throws. You're watching McDonald on a little half roll with no intention to run. It's one-on-one -on -one coverage, virtually impossible to stop unless you can rush the passer. A first down for the Trojans, and it's first and goal to go at the Stanford eight-yard line. Here comes Rock Shawnee. The give is to White. Touchdown, USC! For Charles White, his sixth touchdown so far this season. And oh, did the Trojans establish their superiority right from the outset with that drive. Stanford had its weak safety up on the line of scrimmage. This area should have been protected pretty well by design. Some good blocking up front. Charlie White goes into the end zone. Trying to kick the extra point will be Eric Hip. It's good. And Hip has now converted on 24 out of uh, 25 PATs this year. We'll be back with more USC football in just a moment. Rob Kerr kicks off for USC. Vincent White is the deep man for Stanford, and it'll be White at the four to the ten. Vincent White, a freshman, tries to spin away and reverses field, and he's pulled on from behind. The tackle made by Joey Browner, a freshman defensive back from Atlanta, Georgia. The speed of Joey Browner against the speedy Vincent White. Mike, one year ago, we saw the same Stanford team take the ball on its opening drive and march the length of the field basically with the pass. Sometimes that happens to you, especially on opening drives. Let's see if what a year does to change things. Turk Schonert, the quarterback. Running backs are Mike Dotterer and Jim Brown. It is Mike Dotterer. He gets just a couple. Stopped it around the 18 or 19 yard line. This is Mike Walden along with Dave Levy from the Los Angeles Coliseum. The Trojans took the opening kickoff and went 72 yards in seven plays with White scoring from eight yards out. Eric Hip added the extra point. It's seven to nothing USC with 11.45 to go first quarter. Second down and nine at the 18 of Stanford. Stanford operating in the shotgun. Shoulder. Throws a little swing pass over the head of Vincent White. Herb Ward was covering, but Schoenert must have thrown that ball a good five or eight yards over the head of White. Stanford quarterbacks have traditionally loved to throw the ball or dump it off to their backs. There's a good reason for this. Linebackers aren't too worried about that play. They want to drop and help stop those medium zone out and curls. I think SC will continue to do that until Stanford has some success throwing to their backs. Mike Dodderer and Wasik. Now Wasik going in motion. The lone running back is Dodderer. Schonert ready to fire, and he's got his man at the 30-yard line. Andre Tyler, the split end, and Tyler is cut in two right away by the left cornerback, Herb Ward. And that'll be a gain of 12 yards, a first down for Stanford. Stanford is a very efficient passing team. Anytime their quarterbacks get time to throw the ball, because they have good talent at quarterback. They have good receivers. The tough thing about it for a defensive team is not to get frustrated when someone completes a pass. Tyler split off to the left side this time on first and 10 at the stand for 30. Greg Hooper is in there now. The give is to Todd Wasik who slants over tackle and Wasik goes to the 32. Gain of only two by Todd Wasik a junior back from Union Lake Michigan. Tackle made by Larry McGrew and Dennis Johnson. 
The three down linemen for the Trojans, Dennis Edwards, Ty Sperling, Myron Lapka. For the linebackers, Eric Scoggins, Dennis Johnson, Ricky Gray, Larry McGrew. In the secondary, Ronnie Lott, Herb Ward, Jeff Fisher, and Dennis Smith. Second and eight. Schoenert out of the shotgun. He's going to run this time. Schoenert will be out of bounds around the 38-yard line. Jeff Fisher ran him out of bounds at the 38. Andre Tyler had a good block for Stanford around the 35. Schoenert operating out of the shotgun, and number 51, Chip Banks, the outside linebacker for the Trojans, came in at a pretty sharp angle. Schoenert had time to see him. His receivers were covered. He took off and, and ran the football. He's a pretty good runner. He will run. He's not held in that pocket. And if he gets in trouble, they can always bring in their freshman, John Elway. Mike Dodder, Todd Wasick, the running backs. Bo is the tight end. He goes in motion. The give is to Dodder. Dodder's put down right at the line of scrimmage by Ricky Gray, the sophomore linebacker of USC from Tucson, Arizona. You might wonder what an, in, what an inside linebacker is doing on the line of scrimmage and indeed in the backfield. The Trojans use the defense where everyone lines up nose on a man and then take a slant one way or the other. Sometimes it works real well and that time it did as you watch Don Lindsay going over that play. In punt formation on fourth and two for Stanford Ken neighbor. Deep Ray Butler. Good punt by neighbor. Butler is backed all the way up to the seven. 15 20 and Butler runs into traffic and is dropped around the 23 yard line. Larry Harris making the tackle for Stanford. It'll be a first and 10 for USC from their own 20. A 55 yard punt and a 16 yard return by number 86 Ray Butler. Mike it, it's probably difficult for the average fan to see on their screen but during USC's last drive their scoring drive Stanford used almost its complete package of defenses. They tried a little bit of everything they normally do. It didn't work. Let's see what they do this time. Butler wide to the right side. Rock Shani is wide to the left. You can hear McDonald barking out the signals. The pitch to, Char to Charles White. White is up to the 33 yard line. Charles White brought down by Rick Parker. That's going to be enough for another first down for USC as White is ripping off big chunks of yardage here in the first five and a half minutes of this first quarter. White already has 69 yards in six carries. Well, Charlie White is in for a very big day if the Trojan offensive line continues to handle the line of scrimmage as they have so far in this first quarter. White had a big day against Stanford last year, 201 yards and about 30 some odd carries. The pitch to White. 35, Charles White to the 40, trying to get outside, and he's dumped down at the 42. Mike Vickrock, Shawnee, number 80 for the Trojans, got a magnificent block on a Stanford safety man, actually dumped him over sideways. Maybe we'll get to catch a little bit of it toward the end. Number 80 at the top of your screen on the left. We didn't see it very clearly, but that block is what made that play go. And the tackle was made by Rodney Gilmore. So a pickup of eight more yards by Charles White. It's second and two at the Southern California 41. Seven to nothing, the Trojans lead. Paul McDonald throws to Hobie Brenner. Hobie Brenner slants ahead to the 46-yard line. He was in the grasp of the right quarterback, Rick Parker, but Brenner at 6'5 and 235 simply overpowered the 5'11, 180-pound Parker and picked up an extra two yards. Stanford was in the perfect defense for that play. Actually, that time, Paul McDonald threw into the pass coverage. The corner was reading up for the man in the flat, but it was so short, he didn't have time to make the tackle before we could get, unless he could get the first down. That's the sixth first down for the Trojans in the first seven and a half minutes of action, leading seven to nothing. From the 46, Marcus Allen flips up to midfield and is knocked down at the Stanford 49. Marcus Allen, who has scored six touchdowns for USC, and he may be the heir apparent at the tailback spot when Charles White departs at the end of this year. If you had to make a guess, that's what you'd say right now without question. A very talented runner playing at fullback for the Trojans. Tackle on Allen made by Vince Williams, a sophomore linebacker. It'll be second and five for the Cardinal and Gold from the Stanford 49. McDonald throwing on the run off of the palm of the hands of Marcus Allen. And Marcus was in the clear at about the 44-yard line. This was a little bootleg pass where the Trojan fullback slipped out in the flat, Mike. He was open. Paul just overthrew the ball. 
This program is authorized under television rights granted by the University of Southern California. It is solely for the entertainment of our audience. And any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this event, including the imposition of a charge for viewing of the program without the express written consent of the University of Southern California, is strictly prohibited. Third and five for the Trojans at the Stanford 49. SC on top, seven to nothing. White goes in motion. The give is to Allen. He is dropped right at the line of scrimmage. Stanford was waiting for the fullback draw, and it was Chuck Evans, the defensive tackle, who nailed him. Mike, draw plays have their best effect for you when the defensive line is really rushing tough and is actually putting pressure on your quarterback. So far, Paul McDonald has had all day to throw the football. I'm not sure that was a great call, but at least it didn't work. David Pryor ready to punt to the deep man for Stanford, Andre Tyler. Good spiral. It'll be taken at the 11 by Tyler, and a penalty marker was dropped at the 10. Tyler no soon had gathered that football in, and he was dropped in his tracks. A 38 yard punt by Dave Pryor, and we will see what this is all about. The referee today is Don Wilson. The tackle was made by Tim Shannon. The umpire is Dave Brazell. Ed linesman is Bob Beal. Line judge, John Jones. Field judge, Bill Fetty. And the back judge is Bill Thayer. Bill is right in front of Turk Schoenert, number 14. Don Wilson is the dean at Allen Hancock College. Lives up in Santa Maria. My, God, my guess would be the official was merely marking where the ball was being caught and where the drive was going to start from in case there was a penalty. I think that's correct, Dave Levy, simply because now I think they're explaining John Robinson over there. And Robinson seems to be a little unhappy. Now Robinson's got a smile, but only for just a second. Only for just a second. I would say that was a cynical smile at best. Well, John Robinson with a 36 and 6 record since he's been the head coach at SC, and he's had fantastic success in this league. 20 and 3 in the Pac-10. Stanford will have a first down at the Stanford 12-yard line. Turk Schoenert, the quarterback. Inside handoff to Mike Dotterer, slants over tackle, gets up to the 17, a pickup of about five by the freshman from Edison High in Huntington Beach, Mike Dotterer. Mike, over the years, Stanford has had a tremendous tendency. Whenever they would cheat a back in the backfield up toward the line of scrimmage, that's the way they're going to run the football. Let's see if that still holds true today. It did on that last play. 59 is John Del Mar, the right guard for Stanford. Looming very big in your picture. They give us to Vincent White. He's up to the 20. So far, the SC defense has not allowed a point to be scored against it in the first quarter of any game this year. Tackle made by Dennis Johnson. This has been a very consistent defense, and part of it has been Dave Pryor, the freshman punter, who seems to put that ball out of bounds inside or around the 10-yard line much of the time. In fact, Stanford was the last team to score a touchdown on SC in the first quarter. So they've gone 10 straight games now without allowing a point in the first quarter. He has to dump it off over to Dotter. Oh, and his Dotter are cracked in two by Ricky Gray. The linebackers of SC are doing a great job so far in this first quarter. Decide on defense that you're going to drop your linebackers to help you on those medium zone passes, and you can see that Schoenert is a little frustrated looking downfield. They're going to be a little late coming up to hit backs. You're going to make some yards in front, but when you're facing a fine quarterback, much of the time you want him to dump that ball off in front. It helps his average, but it also helps your overall defense. It's a first down for Stanford, and that is only the second first down here in the first quarter for the Cardinals. Whoops! Fumble, and Schoenert has to cover it. The snap from the center, John McCauley, slipped right through Turk Schoenert's hands, and he had to go back and plump on the ball to recover it for Stanford. Well, as you can see, the, the uh, fumble is caused between the quarterback and the center. On that play, Ricky Gray, number 35, a linebacker who's normally off of the offensive guard, maybe two or three yards, lined up right on his nose on the line of scrimmage. Why do you do that? Because you want him to try to block you and not double on your nose guard. 
Andre Tyler split to the right side. Second and 15 now after the loss of five on the bobble of that exchange. Shona trying to make up for it in a hurry. It is out of bounds. Caught by Ken Margarine, one-handed, but out of bounds at the 35-yard line. For a moment or two, it appeared that Jeff Fisher might have an interception. Well, Shona actually put that ball up close to being out of bounds, close to being caught, close to everything. The key to the play was the pressure of the defensive line. They didn't actually sack him, but they certainly disrupted his timing. And if you can do this consistently, you're going to get a couple. That margarine is so graceful and acrobatic, he can catch him one-handed. Most guys require two. Third and 15 for Stanford from their own 18. Seven to nothing, Southern California leading out of the shotgun. Dirk Schoner going long and deep. Way and especially by Herb Ward, I think Schoner just threw it away. Mike, the Trojans were in a, almost what you'd call a prevent defense. Five across the board, lined up 10 or 12 yards deep. That play had no chance to work unless somebody fell down. Here is Ken Neighbor ready to punt for Stanford on fourth down to Raymond Butler, who's back in his own 36. Butler will field this at the 40. Butler trying to get to the outside. Slips one tackler. He's moved. Ray Butler cuts it at the 30. Butler is down to the 25-yard line of Stanford. Raymond Butler is beginning to love those punt returns and kickoff returns. He's had good success. That time he got outside to the picket, picked up two or three good blocks. Great field position for the Trojans. That was a 42-yard punt by Neighbor, and here is the start of the 35-yard return by number 86, Raymond Butler, the senior from Texas. Finally, it's number 72, Dave Bolin, who gets him down. Otherwise, Butler would have been off for the score. Good block there by Anthony Gibson, the freshman back. But look where the Trojans are with a first down at the 25 of Stanford. Here is Charles. I think he's going to have to, Mike. It's the big break for Stanford, without question. It's the type of thing that keeps this game close sometimes, or keeps any football game close, mistakes. You don't want to do that against Stanford too often. So the Stanford Cardinals come up with a recovery of the fumble, and Stanford will have the ball now at the Stanford 12-yard line. We have four minutes to go in the first quarter. Seven to nothing, USC over the cards. Mike Walden and Dave Levy on a Sunday, sunny afternoon here in the Coliseum. Georgia Chica is the new nose guard now for SC on defense. Georgia Chica, he's a freshman from San Jose. Vincent White moves up to the 18-yard line. White brought down by Larry McGrew, a senior linebacker from Berkeley. We're watching Charlie White on the play where he, uh, he fumbles the football. He gets his elbow up a little bit. And when that elbow leaves your side, you never quite know when someone's going to put a hand in there or a helmet. It's pretty tough to hold on to the ball with just your fingertips. Vincent White picks up five, second and five for the cards from their own 17. The running backs are Greg Hooper and Todd Wasick. It's Wasick to the 21-yard line. Tackled by Ricky Gray. It's pretty obvious that Stanford has a lot of respect for USC's defense. Normally you'd say Stanford would throw the ball from their own one-yard line, and indeed they will at times. But they had 88 yards to go when they got this football. That's, that's a pretty tough position to, to risk an interception. If they can get any running game going, it'll really help their attack. That's the first-year head coach at Stanford, Rod Dauhauer. 36 years old, graduated from San Diego State. Oh, a great hit on Todd Wasick, made by Dennis Johnson and by Ricky Gray. I think we'll see both linebackers up fairly close. If you call behind the line of scrimmage close, he was close. No first down, and Stanford is forced to punt again. Ken Neighbor will punt to Raymond Butler. Butler will field this at the 32. Ray Butler to the 40, 45, 50. Butler's to the Stanford 41-yard line. Great block.
blocked by Jeff Fisher, freeing him on that drop down to the 41, and it was Jim Brown, a Stanford running back, who made the tackle. Mike, it's a funny thing about men who return kickoffs and punts. Once they get just a little success and those special teams start believing in them, it seems to happen more and more, and their average picks up, and they can't wait for a punt or a kickoff return. And I think that's happening with Raymond Butler. It was a 47-yard punt by Ken Neighbor, a 27-yard return by Butler. First and 10 Trojans at the Stanford 42. SC leading 7-0. It's Charles White to the 30. Twists out of one tackle. Brought down at the 29-yard line by Terry Renniker, the Stanford linebacker. But the senior, White, trying to atone for that fumble, ripping down to the 29 of Stanford, a pickup of 13, first down USC. Mike, you're looking at a tremendous hole. Stanford is slanting its line. USC is confusing which way they're slanting by motioning and coming back against it, and it's really hurting Stanford. We still have two minutes to play in the first quarter, and Charles White has gone over the century mark, 102 yards in nine carries. That's the 25th time in his career he's gone over 100 yards rushing. White gets the call again. White adds to his total as he slams down to the Stanford 22. Spill by inside linebacker Craig Zelmer. Mike, let me go back to what I said about what USC is doing to Stanford's defense. If you bring a safety man up close to the line of scrimmage, to have a balanced defense, you almost have to slant your line away. Now, USC puts a man in motion. This changes the way they should be slanting their line. But then the Trojans snap the ball someplace in the middle. They're causing some confusion and big gains. Second and three for SC at the Stanford 22. Charles White again, down the middle. White rips to the 12 of Stanford. And again, it's Craig Zelmer, the inside linebacker, who's got to make the tackle. But White picks up 10 more yards to his already fantastic total here in the first quarter. And SC has another first down. Now, if you can frustrate the defense and they say, look, our slanting is hurting us. Let's play straight. Now you're matching strength for strength. Stanford cannot play strength for strength with USC. They have to stunt. Kevin Williams moving over to the right side. Dan Garcia's foot off left. It's Marcus Allen brought down by Joe St. Jim. And Allen stopped just inside the 10 yard line. Joe St. Jim, by the way, passed up medical school. He had been admitted to Harvard and to Duke, to Pennsylvania and UCLA, but he passed up those medical school appointments because he wanted to play one more year of college football. Second down and seven for the first down. Nine yards for the touchdown. Penalty marker goes down. Pass is complete to Dan Garcia. Touchdown, but will it hold up? Let's wait and see what the penalty is all about. Rick Parker was covering, but there wasn't too much he could do about it. Don Wilson will give us the signal, and it is illegal formation. Illegal motion. Somebody was in motion. Mike, we don't get a chance to see it. I think they also ruled the pass was caught out of bounds. Let's see if it was. I don't think so. Well, hard to tell. Looked like he brought that foot down. If you bring one foot down, you're all right. But that's all academic now as the penalty moves the ball back to the 15. Illegal motion. It'll be second down and 12 yards for the first down and 15 yards for the touchdown. 72, Don Mosbar, left tackle. Roy Foster is the left guard. Chris Foot the center. Brad Buddy is the right guard. Keith Van Horn, the right tackle. Rock Shawnee in motion. From the Stanford 15, it's Charles White trying to get a good block. White in heavy traffic moves down to the seven-yard line of Stanford. I think it's pretty tough to criticize Charlie White, but I think he really had that play going to the outside all the way. If he'd have used his speed early, I think he'd have been down inside, well inside the five-yard line. The Trojans are actually using an end-over, unbalanced line when they put Rakshani in motion. That's the end of the first quarter from the Los Angeles Coliseum. SC7, stand for nothing. We'll be back with more USC football in just a moment. It'll be third down and four at the seven-yard line. Mike Walden and Dave Levy from the Coliseum. The Trojans out in front, seven to nothing, threatening to get some more. 
Jim Hefner, Mike Marienthal spotting for us today, Dennis Munition handling our statistical department. Marcus Allen up in front of Charles White. Now White moves up and he goes in motion. McDonald wants to throw to White, overthrows him. White was well covered by the linebacker, Craig Zelmer. Mike, USC is not in a, in a desperate position by any means. They're controlling this ball the game completely, but they've used up a whole quarter dominating the game. Pretty soon you've got to get in that end zone or that begins to wear on you a little bit. I think we've all seen games that shouldn't have been close end up close. Eric Kip will try a field goal from the 14 yard line. Mike McDonald to snap and Scott Tinsley to hold. Hip is one out of five in field goals this year. It's up. It's no good. It slices off to the left. Well, there we go again. You've got a field goal kicker who seems to be a little bit uh, snake bit, if you will. Normally he misses to the left, and I think that time he missed off. I mean, he normally he misses to the right, and that time he missed off to the left. Not very far, but enough. It's SC 7 to nothing over Stanford. We'll be back with more SC football in just a moment. John Elway is the quarterback for Stanford. That's the way Rod Dahauer has been playing it. Sure. Schoenert goes the first quarter and in Elway the second quarter and Mike Dotter is stacked up by Dennis Edwards. Mike just a super play by sophomore Dennis Edwards number 70 a perfect example of a defensive tackle fighting off the block using his speed to come to the outside actually getting outside of his own outside linebacker and Jeff Fisher combines with him in a magnificent defensive play. Now Schoenert on the season had completed 62 percent of his passes. The stats on Elway, 32 out of 50 for 58 percent, four touchdowns, no interceptions. John Elway from Granada Hills High, out of the shotgun. Elway rifles that ball complete to Andre Tyler, the split end at the 32-yard line. Jeff Fisher made the tackle, but wow, did Elway zing that football. Well, John Elway has a very strong arm. You can see Ricky Gray, number 35, almost gets a hand on it and the difference is the strength of John Elway that ball does not stay in the air very long he really throws darts and he's just a freshman first and 10 at the 32 of SC Stanford picking up 14 yards on that pass to Tyler the give is to Mike Dotter he goes up to the 42 and now Stanford seemingly getting a lift from the presence of John Elway at quarterback and they've got the ball up to the 42. Well Mike if you're a Trojan fan you say the score ought to be 21 to nothing but the score isn't 21 to nothing. If you march up and down the field eat up the clock and don't get any points you've got a very good chance of ending up in a very close football game. Now it's still too early to say the Trojans are in that mold but obviously Stanford begins to pick up as this game continues to stay very close. A measurement now and it's going to be that short of the first down second and inches for Stanford at the 42 yard line seven to nothing SC the Trojans scored the first time they had their hands on the ball and they march right down the field White going in from eight yards out hip added the extra point seven to nothing Trojans and that's the way we have it now in the first minute of action here in the second quarter out of the shotgun again in motion comes Vincent White. Elway up to the line of scrimmage and is thrown down. Ty Sperling in there on the tackle at the 42 yard line. Ty Sperling the SC nose guard. Both Stanford quarterbacks Schoenert and Elway will take off and run the football. And anytime you end up in a close football game a scrambling quarterback scares the devil out of you if you're the defensive football coach. It's tough to rush the passer and drop your linebackers and not let a running quarterback get a few yards. This will be an official's timeout. We'll have another measurement to see whether or not the Cardinals picked up the first down.
Once again, Stanford misses on the try for the first down. We have 13.42 to play in the second quarter. USC 7, Stanford nothing. Mike Walden and Dave Levy from the Coliseum. This is SC's homecoming game, and the crowd is going to be up close to the 80,000 mark here in Los Angeles today. It's gotten a lot warmer, too, than about an hour and a half ago. It's close to 80 degrees. Mike Dotter. Recovery for SC. Mike, it never fails. Stanford finally picked up USC's slanting by bringing their inside linebackers up on the line of scrimmage. They got what would have been a first down. They fumbled the ball. A big field position break for the Trojans. If anything, I think Dotterer ran into the man trying to lead interference for him, and that was Paul Hibbler, and the collision forced him to cough up the ball, and Ward makes the recovery, and now the Trojans right at midfield with a first down, leading 7 to nothing. Marcus Allen and Charles White in the backfield for Paul McDonald. McDonald on the delay, handoff to Charles White, runs straight down the middle to the 43. Tackled by Dave Morsey, the inside linebacker of Stanford. Like we said before the game, or at least I did, that I felt if Stanford were going to stay in this football game, it would have to be because USC's offense did not remain efficient as it has been all year long. Charles White came in, ranked as the number seventh all-timer in rushing on the NCAA stat list. He has just gone past Earl Campbell, the Heisman Trophy winner of Texas. So White is now number six all-time rusher in NCAA history. Marcus Allen gets the call, and Allen uh, has a first down for Southern California down to the Stanford 36-yard line. Rick Parker made the tackle, but Dave Morsey had the clearest shot at Allen right about the line of scrimmage. John Robinson says that maybe the finest thing Marcus Allen does is gets two or three extra yards after he is hit. He seems to have a way to slide, twist, or fall almost every time. comes Rock Shani, first and ten at the 36 of Stanford. It's White to the 30-yard line. Chuck Evans on the tackle. Just flipped White down at the 30-yard uh, line. But Charles White on his way to being becoming the second greatest career rusher in NCAA history, back of only Tony Dorsett of Pitt. Mike, what Stanford is continuing to do now we see a Stanford injured player well, continuing uh, to get players hurt. Well, it's a very physical game. There's no question about that. Stanford is continuing to bring a safety man almost up on the line of scrimmage with USC's motion. When they do that, they're leaving either single coverage man to man or really putting pressure on their linebackers to get back in zone. I think if they have any success, we can expect to see SC going to that single man pass pattern type of passing game. The injured Stanford player is Kevin Bates, sophomore linebacker, an outside linebacker from Cincinnati. So Bates leaves, and his replacement will be Jay Summers, a sophomore from Solana Beach. Second down, five at the 30-yard line of Stanford. Trojans ball, Trojans leading seven to nothing. Marcus Allen. Marcus Allen goes down to the 24, and he should have enough. Yeah, first down again for USC. The tackle on Allen made by a tackle, Steve Ballinger, sophomore from Camarillo. Stanford using basically an eight-man front much of the time. If you can run against an eight-man front, uh, you've got a good offensive running game going, and it should allow your passing game to work. Let's credit the offensive line with doing the job, springing White and Allen loose. Rock Shani starts in motion. The pitch to Charles White slips one tackle, two tackles, goes to the outside. Oh, did he pull over that Stanford tackler? Steve Foley came up to hit him, and Charles White just lowered his head and shoulder and pulled right into him. Well, we saw the motion take one man away. You're going to see Marcus Allen make a very adequate block. Charlie White uses his speed, stays to the outside. Now watch this. And becomes very oh. physical himself. And that's about all a safety man can do is just sort of jump aboard and get him down. He's, Charlie's pretty short. If you take a real full speed shot at the waist and you bounce him off of you, you risk the chance he's going to go all the way.
John Robinson was saying the other day, to be a good tailback, you got to be a little mean and nasty and love to hit and get hit. White can do all of that on second and one. It's Marcus Allen, first down for Southern California at the Stanford 13. And getting back to Charles White just once again as the tackle on Allen was made by Dennis Engel. Charles White, and we have, we're early in the second quarter, 11.25 to play in the game, has 147 yards and 15 carries. Oh. First and 10 at the Stanford 13. In motion, Kevin Williams. Charles White again to the seven. Pick up of six more. Tackle made by Rodney Gilmore from the Stanford secondary. Mike, there's a lot of physical contact going down between those two lines on the field. Almost every play, somebody's getting up very slow. John Robinson and Paul Hackett over there conferring on the sideline. Right in front, right in back is Vic Roxani. It'll be second down. For the first time, here is White. White cuts in. Outside of the goal line. Craig Zilmer got him, and White was just a yard or so away from scoring again. It'll be first and goal to go for Southern California. And the Trojans just a yard or so or less away from another score. Mike Shirley White is a master at deciding or making decisions on this pitch play whether to take it outside or cut it back inside. It still appears to me he's going a little too slow on his first moves. Timeout called here at the Los Angeles Coliseum. We'll be back with more USC football in just a moment. Which one is the crowd noise? Left one? Left one? One, two, three. No, not really. No, it's not it's just, just volume. You're just feeding too much crowd noise into our headset. Oh, it's killing us. Mm. First and goal to go for Southern California. The ball less than a yard away from the Stanford goal line. It's Charles White. Touchdown, USC. The Trojans, 49 yards in nine plays. White gets his second touchdown this afternoon and his seventh this season. And by the way, we mentioned when White hit the century mark, it was the 25th time in his career at Southern California that he's rushed for 100 yards or more in a game. This is also is the 15th time that White has gone over 150 yards in a game. Eric Hip to kick out of the hold of Scott Tinsley. Mike McDonald to make the snap. Hip has it again. Eric Hip adds the extra point. And the Trojan lead is now 14 to nothing with 10 20 to play in the second quarter. We'll be back with more SC football in just a moment. McDonald's, Vincent White, number 22 of Stanford, and of course, number 12 of SC, Charles White, as we look at Traveler. And we have Paul McDonald and Mike McDonald. Well, here's Charlie White's last touchdown. It wasn't the biggest hole of the day, but the Trojans did get the ball in the end zone. And I can hardly remember when Stanford had the ball last, Mike. It seems like this has just been a preview of USC's offense so far. I'll tell you when they had it last. When Dotterer ran into his own man and fumbled the ball, and the Trojans made the recovery and then went right in 49 yards. And Stanford has called for a timeout. John Elway, the freshman quarterback, wants to confer with head coach Rod Dauhauer. 
Mike, until Stanford puts some pressure on USC's defensive line or linebackers in the form of a running game, all they're going to see is a complete drop off of pass defenders. USC today is prepared to use four, five, and even six defensive backs on some down and distant situations. Once in a while, four down linemen if they really need a pass rush badly. So far, Stanford's passing attack has not been efficient enough to put pressure on any of USC's alternate defensive plans. Stanford must be able to run the football or they're in for a long day. Ten twenty to play second quarter. It'll be a first down for Stanford from their own 20. USC 14 Stanford nothing. Mike Walden and Dave Levy from the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. Temperature close to 80 degrees. We have a crowd of close to 80,000 here this afternoon for the SC homecoming game. Elway sets up to throw. Incomplete and intercepted. Herb Ward, the man on the spot again. The ball went right through the hands of number 22, Vincent White, and right into the midsection of 23, Herb Ward of USC. USC was only rushing three people which means if you can count eight are dropping off to pass and you're looking at Elway kind of waiting a little bit. He wanted to throw to his tight end slip through his hands. Herb Ward was in the right spot. That's the first time this year the young quarterback Elway has been intercepted and really it's not his fault. White Vincent White should have caught the ball. And now look where the Trojans are. Great field position with a first down at the 27 of Stanford in motion rock Shawnee. Paul McDonald to throw and down he goes he is sacked by Dan Floyd number 94 of Stanford. Well you've just seen exactly what Rex passing offense is and that's when someone gets to the quarterback. It's unusual for the Trojans to see this much Paul McDonald has been sacked very very few times this year someone I can't imagine 68 Keith Van Horn being thrown aside but someone on that defensive line for Stanford is a pretty strong man. Well, that one of the strong men for Stanford is Dan Floyd, number 94. A loss of eight on the play, <laughs> second and 18 at the 35 of Stanford. Steph Rose. Yeah. Pitch to Charles White. White is flipped down at the 31 yard line. Good, tough tackle made by Joe St. Jim, the senior from Rancho Palos Verdes. Went to Rolling Hills High School. Gain of just uh, four yards by White, and I say just four yards because White has been averaging 7.6 every time he carries the ball this year, and so far here in the first half, he's been averaging about 10 yards a carry. Let's go, Morgan. Third and 14 at the 31 of Stanford. Williams and Garcia moving out to the right side. On third down, McDonald to throw, pumps once. He's going to run. He comes up and throws complete to Allen. Allen steps out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Paul McDonald, not known for great speed or even great agility, made a fine athletic move to get free. Looked downfield, which he is noted for, and found Marcus Allen. The Trojans needed 14 yards for the first down. McDonald gets some 16, and the first down to the Stanford 15. Great pump fake. And here he is rolling out to the left side, throwing to Allen, and Allen out of bounds at the 15. McDonald has completed four out of six, 34 yards in this game. First down at the Stanford 15-yard line. Rock Shawnee in motion comes back this way. It's Marcus Allen. Five-yard line, Marcus Allen, touchdown, USC! The Trojan offensive line and the Trojan offensive backs continuing to do a great job of blocking whoever Stanford has in the front seven or front eight. Two years ago here in the Coliseum SC beat Stanford 49 to nothing. It could be a carbon copy today. Some fine blocking a big hole. It looks like Stanford's defense is trying to stop anything that goes sideways having a very difficult time of doing that and then getting ripped right up the middle. Eric hip to kick the extra point. He has it, and it's 21 to nothing, SC over Stanford with 8.38 to play, second quarter. The 
a signal by the referee Don Wilson indicating that Stanford 12 men on the field. We'll be back with more SC football in just a moment. Well, there's nothing much to say, Mike, except Stanford doesn't have any points on the board, and USC has 21. The drive that Stanford's making now has really come about because of what you'd call broken plays or semi-broken plays. Elway or Schoenert go back to pass. Everyone seems to be covered. They move around a little bit, and finally they find somebody, or they take off and make a few yards. I really don't think it's a breakdown in pass coverage. USC has decided, let's rush the passer with three people. They may continue to do that, but I would doubt it. I think they will vary it. 96 for SC is Myron Lapka. He's one of the co-captains today for the Trojans. The other being the center, Chris Foote, number 62. There's the famous Stanford tree, who always marches with the Stanford band. 317 to play here in the second quarter, 21 to nothing. USC over Stanford, third and three. Elway. Dumps it off, incomplete to Jim Brown, and right on top of Jim Brown was linebacker Chip Banks. Stanford trying to flood a zone and still bring someone across the field against the grain. A good idea, but people were covered, and Banks was right there when the ball was dumped off incomplete. It'll be fourth and three, and Stanford down 21 to nothing. No field goal attempt here. 313 to go in the second quarter. Chris Gressel is in there at tight end for Stanford. He's a freshman from Placentia. Chris Gressel. Elway has time. Throwing to Margarine. Knocked away. Two men that were on Margarine. Were pretty obvious. Dennis Smith. It was pretty obvious the Trojans might be willing to give up a first down, but not a touchdown. Dennis Smith and Herb Ward both in the same position to catch the ball as the potential receiver. Frankly, I like that call because if you're going to go on a key fourth and three situation, go with your best, and Margarine is the best. It'll be Southern California's ball with a first down at the 18-yard line, 3.07 to play here in the second quarter. Following that abortive fourth and three situation for Stanford, Charles White around the left side, brought down by Rick Parker and Dave Morsey. I think the question for the Trojan offense now is, does John Robinson want to put the ball in the air and attempt to score with three minutes and two seconds left? Or is he going to keep it on the ground and try to ground it out? Ball is at the 22. It's John Robinson and Paul Hackett have a few words over in the sidelines. We're into the final three minutes now of the first half. Marcus Allen, Charles White. It's Marcus Allen. He goes to the 25, a pickup of about three. Getting up off the bottom of the pile is Dennis Engel, a freshman from Santa Clara. This third down is a big play for the Trojans. If they don't make a first down on, on third, they will punt on fourth, and Stanford will get the ball back with about two minutes left. And with John Elway at the controls, anything can happen. He really provides a great deal of excitement, and he's only a freshman. His father, Jack, used to be the coach at Cal State Northridge, now the head coach at San Jose State. Charles White trying to pick up the first down, but it's stopped at about the 26 or 7 yard line by Chuck Evans. Evans plays a lot of outstanding defensive tackle for Stanford, and he has over the last three years. Well, the Trojans will punt the ball. Stanford will get it back with a, something under two minutes left. This will be the second punt of the day by Dave Pryor. Andre Tyler standing back deep as John Robinson sends in his special units. You wonder why he kept them on the side. He's trying to run that clock down. He doesn't want them to get on the field, get nervous, get up and snap the ball without wasting a little time. It's Back. USC 21 to nothing over Stanford. Charles White has scored two touchdowns on runs of eight and one yard. And 
Allen got the other from about seven yards out. Timeout called by USC. Apparently, John Robinson was willing to take the five-yard penalty to make sure that uh, Stanford didn't get any more time because I think he feels Dave Pryor can kick the ball pretty far, and Stanford feels feels position for the extra five yards won't be that great. The Trojans trying to win their 14th game in a row here today, and they are certainly doing that with conviction in the first half, leading 21 to nothing. Alabama already has won today over Florida, so Alabama has won 14 in a row. Alabama and SC with the longest collegiate winning streak in the nation. Dave Pryor ready to punt for Southern California. Andre Tyler deep for Stanford. Tyler at the 34. Tyler is stopped at the 40 yard line. A 38 yard punt by Pryor and a six yard return by Tyler. Tackle made by Ken Jordan, a sophomore linebacker from Atlanta, Georgia. Well, the Trojans did call a timeout last time, Mike. It wasn't a penalty, so John Robinson just wanted to run that clock down as far as he could. And we're going to see a, a form of a prevent defense. And by prevent, I don't mean last play in the half, because there is a minute and 29. One twenty-nine to play, first half. Stanford with a first down at the Cardinals' 40-yard line, trailing 21 to nothing. Elway. Rifles this one incomplete. Ricky Gray tried to pluck it off for an interception, but the pass thrown a little bit too low, even for the SC linebacker. Uh, Elway was throwing to his split in, Andre Tyler. Good coverage by the Trojans. If Elway had, had really thrown the ball well, it would have been complete. But a lot of people around the ball. That's all you can really expect as a defensive coach. Here's Elway again trying to do his thing. Steps up and Rifles this one, and he has his man in a 48-yard line. Penalty markers drop. Margarine made the catch and was tackled in his tracks at the 48. Dennis Smith, number 56, is going to be called. Uh, I mean, Dennis Johnson is going to be called for pass interference. He got there just a little bit early. Declined by Stanford because they got a first down and. They're going to take the first down at the Southern California 48 yard line with 123 remaining in the first half. Stanford has John Elway at quarterback. His running backs are Vincent White and Jim Brown. The flanker Ken Margarine. Tight end Pat Bow. Elway is hit on six out of 11 for 96 yards. One has been intercepted. Elway doing his escape back on the run incomplete at the 50 yard line he was throwing to Jim Brown at the 50 this is one of the few times in the first half the Trojans have have used a dog or a blitz if you will 51 chip banks was going uh, to rush the passer along with those three defensive linemen and they put a lot of pressure on him you know you talk about Charles White and his rushing stats for USC and White has over 150 yards 168 to be specific. Elway, I'll bet, has had at least 168 running from sideline to sideline since he's been in here in the second quarter. Second and 10 at the SC 43. Elway's pass is caught by Tyler at the 33 yard line, and he's cracked in two by Jeff Fisher. Mike, on that play, the Trojans only rushed two defensive linemen. The noseman actually stood up on the snap of the ball. You can see Georgia Cheek is 78. He's back trying to mirror the quarterback so that if he takes off to run, he goes, he's his personal man. First down, Stanford at the 33 of SC. Dumps it off to Mike Dodderer, and Dodderer is spilled out of bounds at around the 32-yard line. Ricky Gray was over there along with Jeff Fisher, and that play netted at Stanford just one yard. When that noseman drops off on a pass play, they call him a spy. And what he's really doing is trying to see if it's going to be screen, draw, or quarterback scramble. And they're just using him like an extra linebacker and actually going with the two tackles just to contain that quarterback. And if he does break inside, it's that nose man's job to adjust and get there. 43 seconds still halftime. Stanford trying desperately to get some sort of a score before the clock runs out here in the first half. The snap was a little high to Elway. Elway getting some good blocking. Now the pressure is on and down he goes. Mike, 
right, there was the perfect example. Number 63 was the spy, the nose man. When the left defensive tackle got double teamed and went down, Sperling came all the way around to the outside and put that pressure on the quarterback, and the other people caught up and made the tackle. Byron Darby, Ty Sperling, and Brad Streelman doing a good job on defense for SC. Stanford now calls for a timeout. The ball is back at the SC 46, a loss of 14. It'll be third and 23 now for the cards. I don't think I've ever seen Stanford's passing attack so completely shut down in one half as we're seeing today, Mike. Their only real passing game has been a, a couple of medium zone hook passes and then the quarterback having to scramble and throw the ball on broken plays. Just a great job of defense. The last time Stanford beat UCLA and USC in the same year was 1971. And the quarterback for Stanford that year was, Dave Levy, Don Bunce. Don Bunce. You were going to say Don Bunce. That's what I was going to say. I know you were because Don is in the booth just down to our right working on the telecast back up north to Sanford. He's now Dr. Don Bunce. Dr. Don Bunce, and he wants to go into sports medicine. A la Dr. Curlin, Dr. Job, Dr. Adrian Goodman. And even Dr. McCall for Stanford. Yes. Milton McCall is a linebacker who was injured, not expected to play today. He's the eighth McCall to go to Stanford. Throwing long and deep is Elway, covering his Ronnie Lott, knocked away. Oh, a great play by Ronnie Lott, the rover back. He just tapped that ball away with his left hand. Ronnie Lott did two good things on this play. Number one, he carried out his assignment, don't get beat deep. But also, he was very careful not to get the pass interference call by casually bumping into the man before the ball got there. That's the biggest thing a coach fears on those long plays. Will somebody just lose his concentration and bump into the man? Elway was throwing to Gordon Banks, a senior from Loyola High School here in Los Angeles. Banks is a sprinter on the track team, so I would guess that Banks will do about the same thing on fourth and 23. 18 seconds till halftime. Elway throws this time to the left side to Vincent White. White has it at the 37. Tackled by Chip Banks and Ricky Gray. Eleven seconds left. John Elway trying to go deep on the Trojans, not successful. So SC will take over at their own 36 yard line with 11 seconds remaining in the first half. SC 21 to nothing over Stanford. Don Wilson the referee Chris foot number 62 71 is Brad Buddy. Brad Buddy at 6 5 and 253. The son of Ed Buddy who played some 15 years in the NFL. 11 seconds to go till halftime. SC with a first down. McDonald to throw. And it is intercepted to the 42 yard line. Intercepted by Gilmore. Gilmore to the 45. And Gilmore is pulled down at the 40 yard line. And that is the end of the first half. And that is only the third time this year Paul McDonald has been intercepted. And only the 10th time in his career. It was Roy Foster, the offensive guard who made the tackle on Gilmore, who made the interception. So at halftime, before a big crowd here in the Los Angeles Coliseum, SC leading 21 to nothing. We'll be back with more USC football in just a moment.
21 to nothing halftime. USC over Stanford. Mike Walden along with Dave Levy as Traveler. The SC horse makes his appearance here in front of this SC homecoming crowd of close to 80,000 at the Coliseum. And what can you say about the first half stats? The only statistic that really proves much, Mike, is 21 to nothing. The other one is Stanford, 38 yards rushing, USC 202. Everything else is insignificant. The Trojan offense has dominated the first half. Stanford's offense, on the other hand, unable to even muster really one true design drive. USC's defense just too much so far. And a typical patented first half for Charles White, the great USC tailback, 21 carries, 169 yards, and two touchdowns. At the half, USC 21, Stanford nothing. Here we go into the second half of this Pac-10 football game. SC Stanford, the Trojans on top, 21 to nothing. Rob Kerr's kickoff to open the second half, fielded by Vincent White. Automatic touchback, Stanford with a first and 10 from the 20. And Dave Levy, it'll be interesting to see if Rod Dahauer goes back to Turk Schoenert at quarterback or if he stays with John Elway. Mike, it'll also be interesting to see if he had wants to try to establish any running game at all, if he feels uh, he has enough defense to show patience on offense. I doubt if he really has reason to feel that way. And even though he's got the long field again, 80 yards, I think we can expect Stanford to start putting it in the air. It's number 14, Turk Schoenert at quarterback. Schoenert in the first quarter was two out of five. Elway in the second quarter, nine out of 16. One intercepted, 118 yards. Schoenert throwing to Vincent uh, White, who's run out of bounds by Ronnie Lott. Stanford attempting the quick screen. Ronnie Lott simply saw the play and was there. Now, Rod Dahauer has done exactly what he said he would do. Schoenert would work the first quarter, Elway the second quarter. Now Schoenert is back in in the third. But Dave, in your 16 years in coaching, what does that do to a team? Well, if they're both good, it probably it probably does a lot of good for them. But uh, I don't think that's even an issue now, Mike. Uh, the issue is execution on Stanford's offense. So far, they haven't had it. It'll be second and 11 from the Stanford 19. Schoenert throwing across the middle to Margarine, and Margarine is pleading that he was bumped by one of the Trojans, nothing called. And now Schoenert saying something to one of the officials. Ricky Gray was putting pressure on Turk. And in case you're wondering if that is a nickname, it is not. His given name is Turk, T-U-R-K. Mike, let me answer your question seriously. The only thing wrong with two quarterbacks, or the biggest thing wrong with them, as far as an offensive coach would consider, is he's got to give them both equal practice time. That means nobody gets more than 50% in if you play them equal and give them both the same shot. In motion comes the tight end, Pat Bow. Schoenert's got time to throw, and he's got Margarine at the 38-yard line. Good catch by Ken Margarine, the free spirit from Fountain Valley. Ronnie Lott made the tackle at the 38. First down for Stanford. Very simply, a, a quarterback with a good arm who's accurate has time to throw the ball and finds a little seam in his own defense. USC rushing with what I like to say two and a half people that time the nose man off in the spying position a 19 yard gain in the play of first down for Stanford this time they go to the ground game it's Mike Dotterer to the 42 brought down by number 42 Ronnie Lott the junior from Rialto well that gave Stanford a six yard gain off the running game it has to be one of their biggest running plays from scrimmage by design in this game, the others really being the quarterback scrambling. Second down and four at the 44 of Stanford, 21 to nothing, USC. Once again, it's Jim Brown, and Brown is to the 46, maybe the 47. If they mark his forward progress, they will mark it down at the 46. Tackle made by Dennis Johnson. In the first half, Stanford was in this third and short at least two times, maybe three. I don't recall them uh, ever making it on the running game. Yes, some USC linebacker from the inside got penetration and stopped it. One other time they fumbled the ball after a, an apparent first down. Let's see what happens. Third and two for Stanford at the 46 of the Cardinals. Schoenert rolling out to the right. Tosses complete to Brown at the 50. Jim Brown, a senior running back from Houston, Texas. 
nailed by Herb Ward. First down for Stanford on the four-yard pickup. Mike, this is interesting. In the first half, Stanford, Stanford's quarterbacks on broken plays ran the ball a lot. On what looked to me like a play where the quarterback could have run for for a 100% chance of the first down, he threw the ball. So Stanford with a first down near the midfield stripe. Scoggins, Johnson, Gray, Banks, the quartet of linebackers for USC. The give is to Mike Dotterer. Dotterer is put down at the 48 of Southern California. Mike Dotterer, freshman from Edison High in Huntington Beach. If that name sounds familiar to baseball fans, it should. His dad, Dutch, was a catcher for the Cincinnati Reds in big league baseball. Tackle made by Herb Ward and Dennis Johnson. Dotter goes out. New running back for Stanford is Greg Hooper. Another freshman. He is from Sunnyvale on second and eight. Schonert to the 44. Put down by Ty Sperling, the junior nose guard from Banning High. Gain of four. Third down and four. Undoubtedly, USC, who, who will now be going with four down linemen, anticipates that on third and four, Stanford's going to throw the football. Georgia Chica replaces Ty Sperling at nose guard. <laughs> Byron Darby comes in, replacing Myron Lapka at a defensive tackle spot for SC. Shown it on third and four. Puts it up, and it is incomplete. Actually, Dennis Smith looked like the intended receiver, but a penalty marker is dropped at the 34-yard line. No white jerseys out there at all, and Dennis Smith, the SC safety, had the best shot at that football thrown by Turk Schonert. And I think SC is going to be called for holding on defense. That'll give Stanford an automatic first down at the 34-yard line of Southern California. So far, the Cardinals haven't been able to score in this game. SC hasn't allowed a point to be scored against them in the first quarter of any game, and this is the sixth game of the year. SC will be in South Bend next Saturday against the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. We'll have that for you next Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock on Channel 9. It's Vincent White to the 29. Vincent White trying to spot a hole between right guard and right tackle. Picks up five. Tackle by inside linebacker Dennis Johnson. Stanford has now had two fairly successful running plays on first downs in this drive, and they're once again in what you call that four-down field position. There will be no punts. There will be no field goal attempts. Three downs to make about five and a half. John Robinson is 3-0 and in his tenure as head coach at USC against Stanford. Second and five with the 29. Schonert has time, unloads, and he's got his man at the 25-yard line. Great grab by Andre Tyler. But Chip Banks had Schonert in his grasp when Turk released the ball and still hit his man. Great play by Schonert. The key, the key again, Schonert getting enough time to find someone Almost a broken play. We're getting near the field position where I'm sure USC will stunt or dog someone to put a little more pressure on and try to get a big play. You've got to remember that Stanford has been playing this year without their great halfback, Darren Nelson. He's out for the year. Jim Brown trying to pick up the first down. Looks like he's got it. Brown stopped it around the 24-yard line. First man to make contact was Dennis Johnson. Mike, I'm going to guess that on first down, USC will be in some form of a stunt. And maybe a little man-to-man -man underneath pass defense, which they haven't really used much today. But on the 24-yard line, this is exactly where the Trojans seem to like to, to try to make that big play. You know Stanford's longest gain from scrimmage rushing today? Eight yards, that by Mike Dotterer. Ooh, is that close. First down, but just barely for Stanford. And Stanford's longest run from scrimmage this season, and this is the sixth game for the Cardinals, just 20 yards. So do the Cardinals miss Darren Nelson? <laughs> I would say so. He rushed for over 1,000 yards each of the last two seasons and caught more than 50 passes in each of the last two seasons. That's never been done before in the NCAA history. Rush for over 1,000 and catch 50 balls. 
Vincent White inside the 20 to the 19. Tackle made by Dennis Edwards. Three first downs in a row, Stanford's had success running the ball and basically over their offensive guards. And Jim Brown is on his back at the 21. Jim Brown, the senior running back of Stanford. Ty Sperling checks back in at nose guard for SC. And going out is Georgia Chica. Jim Brown coming off the field under his own power. He's the number two rusher for Stanford. But in five games, Brown had just 178 yards coming in. Charles White generally gets that in the first two or three quarters for SC. But there again, you have the different emphasis. Stanford with the pass, SC with the tailback. It'll be second down, five. The ball near the 19. Out of the shotgun, Turk Schonert. Big rush, and Turk gets it complete to Mike Dotter. Touchdown, Stanford! The first Trojan safety blitz of the day, Ronnie Lott, number 42, doing a good job of concealing it and coming late, almost getting there in time. Schonert showed a little class then. Got, got rid of the ball. Touchdown. I mean to tell you, he was hit a lick, too, just as he delivered the ball, but he had it right on target to his man. Mike Dotterer. And this is the seventh touchdown pass of the season for Turk Schoenert. Eric Scoggins is sim simply not enough speed to uh, stay with the receiver. Schoenert limping because he had that lick. Here's the kick by Ken Neighbor. Right through. So, Neighbor. Kicks the extra point. And with 9.23 left in the third quarter, it's now SC 21-7 over the Cardinals from Palo Alto. kickoff by Ken Neighbor. But instead, it's going to be Mike Hayes. He will not run it out. Automatic touchback, and the Trojans will take over with a first down from their own 20. It would seem, Dave Levy, it's incumbent now upon the Trojans to kind of get things going their way again and have a good drive now with 9.23 to go in the third quarter following a Stanford touchdown. Well, that certainly would take a little steam out of, of Stanford's attack. That was by that drive for the touchdown was by far the best Stanford has looked on offense today. Paul McDonald has Marcus Allen and Charles White. Now they line up in the I formation. First and ten from the 20. Marcus Allen. Just one yard. The Cardinals are waiting for him. Dave Morsey and Chuck Evans squeezed him inside after Allen picked up just one tough yard. The Trojan offense cannot be afraid to keep its versatility. They had great success running the ball in the first half, but if Stanford does pick up and begins to improve against that running game, SC has got to be willing to go to the airways. 21 to 7, SC. Rock Shawnee coming this way. The pitch to White. 20, 25, out of bounds at the 26. Charles White picking up five more. Run out of bounds by linebacker Terry Runnaker. Well, this third down is certainly the biggest of the second half for the Trojans. If they get the first down and continue to move the ball a little bit, they can, if nothing else, punt Stanford into relatively poor field position. If they have to punt from close to their own 30, Stanford once again will have a good chance to move the football. Butler wide to the left side. Rockshani split to the right side. Third and four. Now Rakshani starts to go in motion. And off to White, swinging around the left side. 
White has the first down and then some. Makes his cut at the 40. Stopped at the 43-yard line by Rick Parker, the right cornerback. A 17-yard run by Charles White. And White is getting very close to the 200-yard mark in this game. We still have about nine minutes to play in the third quarter. Charlie White showing not only speed but aggressiveness once again, trying to punish the tackler and indeed doing so at the end of this run and finally taking a pretty good second shot himself. White now with 190 yards in 24 carries. His best ever rushing day, 205 yards against Notre Dame. White's going to take a breather. Mike Hayes is the new tailback. Fake to Allen. McDonald wants to go long and deep to Kevin Williams. And Williams was covered on the play by Rodney Gilmore. Williams appeared to have stopped around the 30-yard line. Mike, it appeared to me there, there was some contact on the play. Yes. Uh, there was no penalty, so the official rules it as incidental, but whether Mike slowed down and the man ran into his back or what, I couldn't tell you, but there was some contact on that play. Paul McDonald coming in today ranked as the number one passer in NCAA stats. He's thrown a touchdown pass in his last nine games, but he has not thrown one yet today. SC leading 21 to 7. McDonald is four out of eight, 35 yards. It's been basically on the ground stuff today for SC. White crosses the midfield stripe down in the Stanford territory, put down at the Stanford 49 by Greg Zelmer and Chuck Evans. This is one of White's best runs today. He really shows movement here and good eyes, really watching the defense, good strength at the end of it and protects the football. A gain of eight by number 12, Charles White. A unanimous All-America last year as a junior. Third down and two for the Trojans at the Stanford 49. Mike Walden and Dave Levy from the Coliseum. Little under eight minutes left in this third period. Here comes White again. Trying to pick up the first down. Looks like he's going to be a little bit shy. White stopped by Craig Zelmer, who submarine through one of the linebackers to spill him. Interesting position now. If you're a foot short, what do you do? Go for it or do you punt? Obviously, the fans are going to say, go for it. I would assume the coach would punt. And that's exactly what's going to happen. And Keith Van Horn is limping on the sidelines for USC. For the offensive tackle, Keith Van Horn. Van Horn has been bothered with a sore calf all year long, Mike. If it's nothing new, I'd expect we'll see him back in the game. Pryor is ready to punt. Spiral angling away from Andre Tyler gets a good roll and it's going to be down to the three yard line. A 45 yard punt down at the Stanford three. David Pryor, the freshman punter from Hemet. You can't ask much more out of a freshman punter than what Pryor has done so far this year. And Stanford, after doing a good job on defense, their offense is now faced with a, what, 97, eight yard field. Tough way to go. Statistics are so misleading. You look at Pryor and you think, well, he's only 37 yards for 14 punts coming in. He really hasn't been doing the job. But how many times has he kicked out of bounds or kicked just as he did and then the ball being downed inside the five? Stanford's ball with a first and 10 from their own four yard line. 6.59 to play in the third quarter. The give is to Dotterer around the right side. And a penalty marker goes down as Dotterer's tackled at the eight. I believe Ricky Gray is going to be called. Uh, I thought it was going to be roughness. It's a face mask call. It must have been an early, an early call. Don Wilson indicates the face mask penalty. Let's see if we can pick it up. Now Gray is 35. Well, Gray comes over the top late. No, it was called from the secondary. It's going to be on Jeff Fisher, number 40. So that'll put the ball out to the 23 yard line. Stanford 23. And Dotterer, after the face mask call, is either bothered with a cramp, and it appears to be a cramp. So Dotterer goes to the sidelines. And this has been a relatively free penalty game. Stanford has had just one for 15 yards. This is only the third one against SC for a total of 30. 
Stanford with Turk Schonert at quarterback. Vincent White, Jim Brown, the running backs. First and ten for Stanford from the Cards 23-yard line. Ken Marjorin is the flanker back. Bo is the tight end in motion. The give is to Vincent White. Up to the 30, maybe the 31-yard line. Mike, it's hard to say where this first down running attack of Stanford was in the first half. It hasn't been exactly complete control of the line of scrimmage, but they've averaged close to five yards on every first down in, in this second half running the football. The tackle on Vincent White made by sophomore Trojan linebacker Chip Banks. Second and two after the eight-yard gain by Vincent White from the Stanford 31. Gordon Banks is now a flanker back for Stanford on second and two. The pitch goes to White, swinging him wide to the left side, makes his cut at the 30, out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Herb Ward and Dennis Smith ran him out of bounds. White showing some speed, just like Charlie White, taking a play outside that, that appeared to be pinned in, outrunning the secondary coverage for a while. And Stanford has gone back to its traditional attack as opposed to the shotgun offense, and it's working better for them. This young man, Vincent White, number 22, is from Denver, Colorado, where he was a prep All-American. First down, Stanford at the cards, 34, 21-7 SC, leading six minutes to play in the third quarter. Schoenert swings it out to White. White one-on-one, -on -one, gets away from one, and is pulled down by Larry McGrew. Larry McGrew made the tackle at around the 38-yard line. He was able to slip the tackle of Herb Ward, but then McGrew put him down at the 35. So a gain of just one. Second and nine at the 35. USC with seven points in the first quarter, 14 in the second. Stanford getting a 20-yard touchdown pass, shown it to Dotterer to score here in the third quarter, and it's 21 to 7. Handoff goes to White, swings to the outside, and Vincent down to the 41-yard line. Vincent White put down at the Stanford 41 after a pickup of six by Jeff Fisher and Dennis Smith. Mike, it appears to me that Stanford got its act together at halftime decided if, if we don't run the football with some efficiency we're going to get run out of this ballpark and so far in the second half even though the touchdown was scored on a passing play this this is a uh, a running Stanford team in this second half the running backs now for Stanford are Greg Hooper a freshman and Vincent White also a freshman back of the senior quarterback Turk Schoenert and they will operate out of the shotgun on third and three Schoenert wants to throw and he's got his man that's Harris at the 47 yard line Larry Harris penalty marker dropped tackle made by Chip Banks we will await the decision of referee Don Wilson as to the penalty marker it's against Stanford could it be holding no personal foul against the cards Here is Schoenert out of the shotgun. Stanford back in the shotgun, and you can see USC still rushing just two. Gets the time to throw the ball. The penalty's going to nullify it. No way you can pick up the penalty on that replay. But the personal foul call against Stanford puts the cards all the way back to their own 22-yard line. It was third and three. Now it is third and 22. Now this is what you call a passing down. Yes, I would say that you are absolutely correct. Dennis Edwards, Ty Sperling, Myron Lapka ready to put the pressure on Schoenert. Here comes McGrew. And it's Cooper makes the catch. Out of bounds. The Trojans were stunning that time on their strong side. Myron Lapka, the tackle, went to the outside. And I think you're going to find Larry McGrew, 57 coming in behind him where normally he'd either drop off or go outside of him. He's going to come free right there. McGrew, Lapka coming to the outside. The ball simply dropped. Yeah, he was. He picked it up on the first stop over in the sidelines, but he dropped it right at his knee. The punt by Ken Neighbor. Fair catch signal for. And the ball is gathered in by Jeff Fisher at the 35-yard line. A 43-yard punt by Ken Neighbor. 
4.09 to go in the third quarter. SC 21, Stanford 7. This is SC's homecoming game, and although we haven't received the official attendances yet, it's guessed it's somewhere between 75 and 80,000. Guess who he's for? First and 10 for the Trojans at the 35 of SC. Charles White up to the 40 and dumped down at the 41 yard line by Rodney Gilmore. The sophomore defensive back made a good tackle on White at the 41. And White now has gone over the 200 yard mark for the third time in his career and Chris Foote goes out of the lineup for SC replaced by Brad Green. I don't know whether Foote was shaken up on that last play or not. Mike he didn't appear to be serious but he got up Foote got up limping a little bit and I think John Robinson wants to be a little cautious. He's already had three knee operations in his career. It'll be second and four from the 41. We'll be back with more USC football in just a moment. To the left, John Robinson conferring with Charles White. It appears that he's been favoring his left thigh, and White is out of there. To the right, Rod Dauhauer, the Stanford coach, and Michael Hayes is the new tailback for SC on second and four at the 41-yard line of the Trojans. Allen sprints through the middle up to the 47 yard line. Steve Ballinger made the tackle, but White picks up a first down for Southern California. And Mike, regardless of what play the Trojans run, anytime Vic Rockshani, number 80, is in the game, he seems to make a, a tremendous number of great blocks on, on outside people. It seems that he spends his whole life going in motion and blocking defensive backs, but he's doing a great job of it. Marcus now with 10 carries. 50 yards. There goes Rock Shani. Mucked at Bay Meadows, San Mateo. Will carry instead to the 42 yard line of Stanford. Brought down by linebacker Craig Zelmer. And some good blocking by Marcus Allen, freeing Paul McDonald on his sweep around the left side. Well, Stanford loses its contain on this little half roll. I'm sure this was not a designed run. There's the block. Wow, he really cut him down. McDonald takes off and apparently uh, right at right close to a first down. They're going to spot the ball down at the Stanford 44. It'll be second down and less than a yard to go for the first down. And guess who? Charles White back in there. Charles White down to the 36 yard line tackled by Steve Foley and that is his all time. 213 yards the greatest rushing day in the four years Charles White has been at USC prior to this day White's best had been 205 yards against Notre Dame last year. The best day ever in an SC uniform for Charles White as far as rushing yarding. Here's White again. Trying to get his there's a penalty marker drop and White fumbles the ball recovered by Stanford at the 40 yard line. The referee says Stanford's football but we wait for the penalty. Terry Renniker comes up with a loose ball. White was struggling is struggling for extra yards. Mike, regardless of the penalty flag being thrown fairly early in the play, apparently no whistle. Let's see when you when you stop, you're asking for uh, you're asking for trouble. Charlie made a good recovery of it, but simply loses the ball. The penalty is on USC holding, naturally declined by Stanford because the Cardinals have the ball with a first down at their own 39-yard line, 156. And Dave Levy, this has been an entirely different Stanford team in the second half. SC 21 Stanford 7. Turk Schoenert still at quarterback. 
fakes to Dotter, throws on the run, and a diving catch made at the 49-yard line of Stanford by the tight end, Pat Bowe. Nice catch by Bowe, his first reception of the day. Mike, if I wanted to make a, a critical evaluation of a third quarter, I'd say that the Stanford team is simply playing a lot better, as we'll see on this play, and that the Trojans have gone into a little bit of a shell offensively, relying almost totally on the run. Not, not seeming to be as loose or as versatile as they have been in most of their games. And when you do that, and you're playing a team that traditionally passes very well, uh, you might be asking for a little trouble. Stanford gets a first down as Rod Dahauer looks on from the sidelines. A first down at the Stanford 49. Turk Schonert. He has one touchdown pass, the only score of the day for Stanford. The pitch to Greg Hooper. And Greg Hooper goes to the SC 47. A gain of four by Hooper. He's from Sunnyvale. Tackle made by Larry McGraw. Or Larry McGrew. What did I say, McGraw? That's Dan, that's Dan McGrew. Or Dan <laughs> McGraw. Whatever, 57. Second down and six at the Southern California 47 yard line. The Trojans 21, Stanford 7. Less than a minute to be played here in the third period. Schoenert, a little quick look in pass. No good. He was trying to hit Ken Margarin. The pass was thrown behind Margarin. Herb Ward over there covering for SC. Turk Schoenert from Servite High in Placentia. 6'2", 185, fifth-year senior at Stanford. Mike McDonald, number 58, in for Ricky Gray, 35. Gray with a little bit of a bad knee. Maybe John Robinson figures McDonald will play better pass defense. Third and six at the Southern California 47. Schonert dishes it off to Hooper. Hooper struggling for yards, tackled at the SC 42. Pick up a five. He's going to be a little bit shy of the first down. Tackle made by Mike McDonald, number 58. So now we have Mike Dotter into the game for Stanford. It'll be fourth and a long one for the cards. The ball just outside the 42 yard line. I, USC. I would second guess this call before the snap, Mike. I'd punt. 21 to 7. Schonert. On the handoff to Dotter. Dotter, I think, has it. A second effort by Dotter as he twisted away from the first contact. Carries him down close to the 40. First down for Stanford. So the Cards get a first down and retain possession of the ball at the 40-yard line of USC. You think that's why I'm not coaching anymore? <laughs> That's the end of the third quarter of play from the Los Angeles Coliseum. SC leading by 14. We'll be back with more USC football in just a moment. The third quarter here at the Coliseum was all Stanford. The Cards had 25 plays to only 11 for USC. And in those 11 plays, 10 of them were running plays by the Trojans. White carried seven times. Stanford at 132 yards to 48 in the third period. That little piece of information passed along by statistician Dennis Manishin, who is at the fastest pencil in the West here in this third period. Schonert incomplete to Vincent White. Fisher covering. Boy, it's really something to see the Coliseum packed today. Capacity is 92,000 plus, and I'm still going by my original estimate, close to 80,000. Temperature right now about 75 degrees. We've had sunshine throughout most of this game. In motion comes Banks, and Banks on the reverse comes back the other way. Banks is slips a tackle of Chip Banks. Banks banging into Banks that time, and finally Gordon Banks of Stanford brought down around the 33 yard line a reverse play and the great thing about this play is not that it fooled anybody it's a great second effort by a runner who just won't go down till he's tackled 
And obviously Rod Dauhauer waiting for the right spot to pull off that trick play. So it'll be third and one now for Stanford at the 31 of Southern California. Early in the fourth quarter. The give is to Mike Dotter, and he is grabbed by Chip Banks. And Mike Dotter is thrown for a loss. They will mark his forward progress to the 34. That is a loss of three, setting up a fourth and four. Pulling guards allow for penetration. That's exactly what happened to Stanford. And this time, the second effort wasn't good enough. All right, Coach Levy, you're coaching Stanford. What do you do now on fourth and four? Well, I think if I had a field goal kicker like they do, I might kick one. But apparently, they don't. They don't know. They don't care what I think today, Mike. Fourth and four. Margarine starts in motion. Back to throw is Schoner to Margarine, and he has it. Ken Margarine had to wait for that ball to catch up with him, making the grab at the 12-yard line. And the tackle on Margarine made by Ronnie Lott. But now Stanford is really in business with a first down at the Southern California 12. Mike, uh, you have to go back to Notre Dame a year ago to see such a turnaround in one quarter almost a hapless Stanford offense in the first half couldn't do anything shows a lot of confidence now they're running much better and they're throwing better Kirk Schoenert is 11 out of 18 for 100 yards from the SC 12 not much there for Vincent White ball will be down at around the 10 yard line Chip Banks Ricky Gray on the hit it's pretty obvious Stanford is Decided not to play this too close to the vest. Going going all out to get on the board. John Robinson showing his concern. And the concern of many SC fans here in the Coliseum right now. Second down and seven. The ball is at the SC nine yard line. Dotter and Vincent White. It's going to be Schonert. He wants to throw into the end zone touchdown Stanford Keith Margarine let's give Stanford credit they have got it together and they are showing a lot of confidence on that field right now the answer to the play was simply enough time to throw and a fine receiver finding a little seam let's look at it again this is the sixth touchdown catch by Ken Margarine this year when a receiver has time to run across the field Pretty tough to stay with him the whole way. That's exactly what happened, and now we have a real ball game. Indeed we do, as neighbor tries to tack on the extra point out of the hold of John Elway. Perfect, right through, and with 12 minutes and 23 seconds left in this game, it's now 21-14 SC. We'll be back with more SC football in just a moment. First down, Stanford. Jim Brown, one of the running backs for Stanford. Turk Schonert, the quarterback, and the seniors done quite a job in the second half, Dave. Well, Stanford has come to life in the second half. Let's put it that way, Mike. They are they're doing a fine job. Eric Scoggins, Dennis Johnson, Ricky Gray, Larry McGrew, the linebackers. Back to throw is Schonert. Schonert's got time. Down he goes. He gets away. He throws on the run and he's caught it, but caught it out of bounds. And Pat Bowe is fit to be tied. He said, no, I had my foot inbounds. And one of the officials tells him to get away. Well, we're going to see Schoenert apparently down right here, gets away, could have run for the first down, decided to throw the football, and they really caught out of bounds. Sperling was in there, Edwards on him, Lapka. Looked like they were going to sack him. But somehow, some way, Turk Schonert got away. Lapka especially had him in his grasp, and Schonert got loose. So it'll be second down, 10. Schonert to throw across the middle. He's got his man, Andre Tyler, at the 39 yard line. First down, Stanford. And now the Stanford passing game is clicking. Mike, I really believe what USC is going to have to do is change up what they're doing, not in their coverage so much as they must change up their rush. 
they're going to have to keep the Stanford quarterbacks a little off balance not give them that much time to find somebody they're going to have to start rushing four maybe five once in a while first down and ten at the Stanford 39 yard line Schonert is 14 out of 23 two touchdowns 129 yards incomplete he was throwing to Jim Brown one of his running backs and Byron Darby had the pressure put on the Stanford quarterback actually that was a dangerous toss by Schonert a defensive tackle I think might have gotten a hand on it almost anyway you can see John Robinson trying to pick up the tempo a little bit it's very frustrating even though USC is ahead by seven points it seems the the pressure is a little bit on John Robinson and his staff Gordon Banks is now when they're at flanker back and he is a sprinter on the Stanford track team so you know what he's going to be doing second and ten the give is to Dotterer, and a penalty marker goes down as Dotterer is tackled at the 43 by Eric Scoggins. It's going to be a nose guard penalty. I think Georgia Chica number 78 probably cut his nose, uh, the face mask, just briefly as he went by. Yep, that's it. And that'll cost the Trojans 15. Stanford 21. Or Stanford uh, trailing 21 to 14 from USC with 8.02 to go. Yes you can see well you don't really get a good picture of it but apparently a Chica 78 got a little bit of the, the nose mask as he went by the official attendance count is now in seventy six thousand and sixty seven seven six oh six seven Stanford now with a first down at the Southern California 41 yard line about five thousand Stanford fans yelling a lot passes complete to Vince White he's pulled out of bounds by Herb Ward out of bounds at around the 33 they'll mark it down at the 34 so that was a gain of seven second out and three at the SC 34 Schonert as his right guard John Delmar Brian Holloway is the right tackle Mike Neal is the left guard John McCauley the center Andre Hines the left tackle the give is to Brown Brown is snowed under after a gain of about two to the 32 Dennis Edwards in there Ty Sperling they will spot the ball down at the 32 so it'll be third and one at the 32 and a timeout now called by an official the referee Don Wilson wants a measurement Mike with two downs to make uh, what something less than a yard and we've got 720 to play I don't think play calling about two feet maybe Stanford really doesn't have a problem in uh, in play selection they have a problem in execution or you might say USC has the problem in execution to stop someone from making roughly two feet in two downs somebody has to make a big play individually seven minutes 20 seconds left in this game third down one for Stanford at the Southern California 32 Turk shown to throw he has margarine at the 21 tackle made by Ronnie Locke and it'll be a first down for Stanford at the Southern California 21 and the Cardinals are on the march Stanford was in a position where they could make a gutsy call like that thinking they had enough to get two feet on fourth down you got to give them credit for for having enough courage to make this call it could have been a loss but indeed it wasn't shown it has really been something in this second half first and ten at the SC 21 shown to throw again he's got all the time in the world apparently to run with the ball to the 20 yard line. Ty Sperling, the nose guard. And there, Turk Schoenert demonstrated that he is a fifth year senior at Stanford. He did not panic. He did not force the ball in there. He decided, okay, nobody's open, so I'll see what I can get. Mike, you're absolutely right. And I'm going to say again that what the Trojans are going to have to do is vary what they are doing in how they try to get to Mr. Schoenert. Eight of just one. Second down nine at the 20. Andre Tyler wide to the right side. Tyler slanting in. 
The throw to Tyler. He drops the ball at the four-yard line. Herb Ward was right there with him, but so was the pass. And nine times out of ten, you would think that Tyler would catch that ball or should catch it. Let's look at it again and see if uh, Herb actually got his hand in there or the ball was simply dropped. I think the ball was simply dropped. And that was a big play without question. Stanford now calls for a timeout, and Turk Schonert will have a discussion with head coach Rod Dahauer. We'll be back with more USC football in just a moment. Stanford now will use three wide receivers, all of them with a lot of speed. Gordon Banks, Andre Tyler, and Ken Margarine. Third and nine for Stanford at the SC 20. The Trojans 21, Cardinals 14, 6.02 to play. And listen to the roar at the Coliseum. The give is to Vincent White. Vincent White slips one tackle, stopped at about the 12-yard line by Brad Streelman. A gain of eight yards. They're going to be a yard shy of the first down. It'll be fourth and one at about the 12. We're going to look at it again. A, a sweep play out of a spread formation or shotgun, whatever you want to call it. Once again, very good second effort running by the Stanford backs. It looked like White was going to be hit at the 15. He was able to slip that tackle and get a couple more. So it's fourth and one. Dodderer is the tailback. Oh, Dodderer fumbles the ball. Coming back the other way to the 15, the 10, to the 9, and I think he's got a first down. My broken play. What can you say? It looked like the Trojans had come up with a big play after the fumble. We're going to see it again. The ball is dropped. It looks like the Trojans are going to get the ball back. Everyone pursuing. And that just wasn't the case. And Dodderer makes a very big play for Stanford. Oh, I'll say a big play. And now Stanford with a first and goal to go. The ball just inside the Trojan 10-yard line. How often have you seen a broken play turned into a big game? Time and time again. Dodderer. Schonert, it's going to be Schonert. He throws to Brown incomplete. And Brown had Dennis Johnson eyeball to eyeball. He also had Larry McGrew, number 57, one of the Trojan outside linebackers, rushing the pass that time, Mike, and putting enough pressure on. There wasn't enough time to look around and find someone open. Let's check the clock as we check John Robinson along the SC sidelines for. 41 left. This game was all USC in the first half. 21 to nothing at the intermission. But Stanford with a valiant rally here in the second half. Cutting that to 21 to 14. And Stanford second and goal to go. The ball inside the 10. In motion goes White. Shoulder. He may run with the ball. 10, 5, touchdown Stanford! The Trojans had number 57, Larry McGrew, their outside linebacker, rushing the passer, but he lost containment. Jonas saw that and took off for the end zone. Look at the Stanford folks here in the Coliseum, and the happiest guy on this planet right now is number 14, Turk Schoenert. Running for one touchdown, passing for two. He's been waiting five years for this opportunity, and he's getting it, and Schoenert is making the most of it. Ken Neighbor will try to tie it up. It's 21 to 20, SC. Holding will be Elway. Ken Neighbor will kick. Good. We've got a tie game in the Coliseum with 4.43 left. And we'll be back with more USC football in just a moment. Are the Stanford fans whooping it up here in the Coliseum? The underdog cards have, tried, have tied number one, USC 21 all. And it's going to be Allen. Marcus Allen to the 20. Marcus Allen stopped at about the 25-yard line. Tackle made by Chris Monson. 
Mike, we're going to look at the touchdown again. You're going to see the Trojans putting pressure on the passer. Regardless of how you put pressure on a passer, you must contain him and keep him in the pocket. Unless you design it to force him out, which they don't. You can see the Trojans thinking he might go up the middle. Schoenert comes outside, puts the ball away. And we've got a tie football game. And it's first and 10 SC at the Trojan 25-yard line. SC's got to go 75 yards here, or at least get into field goal range. Marcus Allen gets it up to the 31. A pickup of six, tackle made by Craig and Zelmer. And the Stanford linebackers have been outstanding here in the second half. And so is that man, number 14, Turk Schoener. Well, you asked me earlier about a two-quarterback offense. Stanford has a one-quarterback offense today, and it's their five-year senior, Turk Schoenert. Four, oh, four minutes left in the game. Both teams could score again. At least a one-quarter offense for three quarters of this game. Elway had the second quarter, and it's second and four at the 31. It's Allen again. Allen with a burst of speed. Has it out to the 41. First down, USC. Tackle made by Chuck Evans. The clock shows 347. The clock is stopped to move the chains for the first down. Allen now with 74 yards and 13 carries. The fullback straight ahead, nothing fancy. It's a pretty good blocking up front. By Don Mosbar, Roy Foster, Chris Foote, Brad Buddy, Keith Van Horn, and Hobie Brenner. White tried to make a cut, and the hole closed in a hurry, and Charles gets just two. Run down by Joe St. Jim. Well, the, two, the one thing Stanford's going to try to cut off, obviously, is Charlie White. They probably don't like the fact that Marcus Allen runs up the middle five, seven, eight yards at a time, but they'd much rather see that than Charlie White outside or off tackle with someone in front blocking for him. Stanford beating the drums now as they are tied 21 all with number one ranked USC. Rock Shawnee in motion on second and eight from the Trojan 43. McDonald to throw to Hobie Brenner intercepted by Rick Parker. Parker at the 50. Parker is nailed hard at the 49-yard line. Rick Parker from Carmel. That's the first pass the Trojans have tried to throw to their tight end today. It was intercepted by Stanford. Here comes the bootleg, the tight end dragging across the field. McDonald looking downfield. And that's the second time today Paul McDonald has been intercepted. He simply threw the ball into cover. And look who makes the tackle. Number 12, Charles White. And it's a pretty good hit. Now the pressure is on that Trojan defense. I'll say it's a pretty good hit. Stanford with a first down at the 49 of SC. 248 to play. Mike Dotterer flipped down by Dennis Johnson. Mike Dotterer has played a lot. Let's don't forget, Mike, that Stanford has a field goal kicker. We know he can kick 56 yards. He demonstrated that last Saturday against UCLA on the last play of the game. In fact, the ball was in the air when the final second ticked off the clock. And that's the second longest field goal in Stanford history. I think Rod Garcia had one for 59 yards. Schoenert across the middle. He's got his man, Vincent White. And White is brought down at the 34-yard line. And Stanford is now at least in field goal range. Maybe not the type of accuracy range you'd want. But Stanford, Stanford can kick the ball that far. Stanford has lost so many close games in the Coliseum in the last 10 years. I'm thinking back to the field goal by Ron Ayala. And then some games involving UCLA. In fact, Peter Bormeister beat him down here a year ago in the final seconds of the game. Stanford and SC tied at 21. 153 left. The give is to Vincent White. White to the outside. Herb Ward has him. Herb Ward gets him down at the 30-yard line. Vincent White dropped down by Ward. The clock shows 135 to play. Stanford obviously in no rush. They want that clock to run down. They want a chance to win it. I would assume they want a chance to win it on the ground or by a field goal, but with what Stanford's been doing in their play calling in this second half, you can't tell. Now, you've got to remember the schedule favors Stanford simply because Stanford does not play Washington, the University of Washington Huskies this year. Schoenert, he will run to the 30, to the 29, and that's all. 
One minute to go. And USC is going to have to start stopping this clock with a minute left, or when they get the ball back, there will be no time on the clock. Edwards and Banks made the tackle on Schonert. The ball is at the 29. Don Wilson crisscrossing the hands. Timeout by Stanford. Well, 53 seconds left. Well, Schonert has more guts than a government mule. He went back. I don't know if that was a quarterback draw or not, but it looked to me like he was going back with intent to throw the ball if somebody was open. He apparently has enough poise to be cautious and not throw it away. And Stanford right now is obviously, in my opinion, going to run the ball to the right, try to get something, and, and go for the field goal. Stanford has one timeout remaining. USC, two. 53 seconds left. And our thanks again to Jim Hefner, Mike Marienthal, and Dennis Manishan for their work on the telecast today. Our director, Mark Wolfson. Producer, Jim Zurek. Rod Dahauer, former UCLA assistant coach. He coached under Don Coriel, too, down at San Diego State. And Dahauer in his first year as the Stanford head coach. Might see Stanford beat both UCLA and SC in the same year, and that hasn't happened since 1971. And that year, Stanford went to the Rose Bowl with Don Bunce at quarterback. Third down, five at the 34. Schoenert throws out to the right. He is hit by Edwards and thrown back. Dennis Edwards back at the 37-yard line. Well, USC makes a big play, and they'll stop that clock again. Schoenert, obviously not wanting to risk a fumble on the handoff, decided to keep the ball himself and get field position. But Dennis Edwards broke through, and now we have a very long field goal. 50, what? 35, uh, 45 over about 52 yards. But remember, neighbor did hit one of 56 against the Bruins last Saturday in Palo Alto. And that field goal hit the left upright about two feet above the crossbar and squirted it over. All right, what John Robinson is doing on the sideline now is quickly discussing this attempted block of this, what appears to be a field goal. And with what Stanford's doing, they might even go for the fake. But nevertheless, he's got to plan an offense with some 35 seconds left on the clock. And Neighbor is warming up on the sideline. The junior from Cincinnati, Ohio. What you have to do now is, is plan that the field goal is good and plan that if it's missed. The toughest plan being if it's made, you've got to get sure-handed people in, figuring the Stanford will squib the ball, not kick it off long, risking the return. And then get your two-minute offense together and march down that field and kick a field goal yourself. Neighbor is in there. On fourth down, this will be from the 43. Thus, it'll be a 53-yard field goal. It's not going to be anywhere close. No way. Okay, Mike. USC's got 38 seconds. They have a field goal kicker who has kicked a 57-yard field goal in his career. Even though it was in junior college and he hasn't been very accurate this year. Now the ball is going to be spotted back at the line of scrimmage because he kicked from the 36 yard line and missed. So that means the Trojans will take over with a first down from the 36. 38 seconds left. There is still time for the Trojans somehow, like some way to there, pull it out. There's definitely time to get into field goal range if you execute well. It's tied at 21, 38 seconds left. McDonald, the quarterback. Kevin Williams on the left side. Garcia goes in motion. McDonald wants to throw, dumps it off to Hobie Brenner. Brenner is up to the 46 yard line. Not quite enough, I don't think, for the first down. Well, right now, the first down is insignificant with 31 seconds yep, to he go. Have it. He's got it. They mark his forward progress at the 46. That'll stop the clock while they move the chains. The clock stopped at 31 seconds. SC has one timeout left. Tied at 21. McDonald dumps it off. And he stopped at the 41-yard line. All right, Mike, 21 seconds left. That's Hobie Brenner. One more 
One more complete pass or one more run, and you are in possible range for a field goal attempt. Kevin Williams goes out wide to the right side. 21 seconds left. It's tied at 21. McDonald, Paul throws to Marcus Allen. 35. Marcus Allen is down to the 31 yard line. It should be enough for a first down with nine seconds. The clock still moving. Mike, you've got to get that clock stopped. To yes. Get the field goal kicker on the field. Seven seconds left, and SC has taken its last time out. Well, Stanford forcing USC to go to the uh, dump off passes, if you will. But there's enough here. 31 yard line of Stanford and seven seconds left. And Eric Hip is the field goal kicker, but he's only one out of six. Well, with seven seconds left to go, I don't think USC has time to run another play and then kick. It would appear to me that Eric Hip is going to have to come onto the field right now, or else John Robinson has decided to to go for the touchdown. Eric Hip is number 10. He's a junior, 19 years old, from San Francisco. He went to the same high school and the same junior college as Frank Jordan. Well, it's pretty obvious that if the Trojans run another play, they simply have to get the ball out of bounds instantly and stop the clock. Any complete pass over the middle, there will be no time for a field goal attempt. Or it could be that McDonald will simply rear up and toss the ball out of bounds to stop the clock. I would assume that's what he's going to do. Garcia's 26. And I mentioned that about Frank Jordan because Jordan won a couple of key games for SC with field goal attempts, and Hip is from the same junior college and the same high school. We will wait and see right now with seven seconds left. Paul McDonald. He's throwing to Garcia. Cut the ball out of bounds. And a penalty marker is dropped at the 23-yard line. Well, if that is pass interference, it was an awfully big penalty. There is Don Wilson. Well, yep, and it's going to be against Stanford. Well, Eric Kipp has a chance to be, to go down uh, among a long line of great heroes of Trojan kickers. I'd like to see the play again if I get an opportunity just to see who the pass interference was called upon, and we will get a chance right here. Well, let's see if we can tell. McDonald trying to get the ball out of bounds, a very gutsy call with only seven seconds to go. If that man had been trapped inside, the game would have been over. But as it is, a penalty, and Eric Kipp has a chance to be the hero of his life. All right. You see that he has kicked one 57 yards in junior college. This will be one from about the 29 yard line. And a timeout is called now by Stanford, so Hip will have more time to think about it. Obviously, Stanford trying to put a little pressure on uh, the kicker. You see it all the time in basketball when people go to the free throw line. Eric Hip is one out of six in field goal attempts for SC. He's already missed one in this game. The only one he kicked was 32 yards against LSU a couple of weeks ago in Baton Rouge. Well, you can believe me that his heart is up in his throat. Distance will not be the problem. He's a quick kicker. He has great distance. He's been a little inaccurate. And John Robinson is a little more than an interested coach. It's a team effort all the way. We've talked so much about Eric Hip, but the pressure is on Mike McDonald, who snaps. The pressure is on Jeff Fisher, who will hold, if Fisher does hold, or Scott Tensley, and then Eric Hip. And it's going to be Tensley who will hold. John Robinson, John Robinson has been through the wars today, no doubt about that. Well, both coaches will sleep tonight. This will be from the 29-yard line. Thus, it'll be a 39-yard field goal. And Gordon Banks is in there on the special teams. He blocked a Bormeister field goal last week. It's blocked. It's blocked. The game is all over. A tie game here at the Coliseum, 21-21. I don't know if Banks got in there to block it or what. It might have been Dan Floyd. Mike, there was a bad snap from center, or the a holder simply dropped in one of the two. This game had everything you could ask for, except a winner. It winds up in a deadlock at 21, 76,067. So SC 
will be 5-0-1 oh, overall, 2-0-1 oh, in the Pac-10, Stanford 3-2-1, and 1-0-1 oh, and one in the league. There's the final from the Coliseum. We'll be back with more USC football in just a moment. <laughs> 